there. You're watching NAPTIP on the move and I'm Angela Agwegi. The year has started on a very busy note. Our package on this episode brings you diverse activities of NAPTIP. We start with the public hearing on the proposed amendment of the Trafficking in Persons Prohibition Enforcement and Administration Act 2015. Take a look. The Federal House of Representative Committee on Human Rights recently organized a public hearing for stakeholders and the general public on the proposed amendment of the Trafficking in Persons Prohibition Enforcement and Administration Act 2015. The Chairman of the Committee, Honorable John Dieg, welcomed all present. This bill seeks to review the mode of appointing the DG for the agency to in and include the supervising ministry in the governing board and review the offenses and penalty provisions in order to strengthen the agency's function. As you may recall, NAPTIP was established to address the menace of trafficking in persons in fulfillment to Nigeria's obligation under the UN Convention Against Transnational Organized Crime, UNTOC. Conversely, human trafficking and the accompanying crimes and offenses have over the years continued to be on the rise, despite efforts being put in place by governments, by NAPTIP and collaborators. However, this is not limited to Nigeria, given the sophistication and the limitation of the law and economic constraints. Many citizens have fallen victim to the deceits, to the casual and the forceful trafficking. Current statistics shows that Nigerian women, Nigerian girls have been trafficked across Africa to many countries, so many African countries. They are in Europe for prostitution, for forced labor, and in some cases, organ harvesting. It is therefore pertinent to review, amend, and repeal our laws to curb this heinous crime of modern day slavery. It is on this ground that the House of Representatives debated on the general principle of the bill and referred it to this committee for further legislative action. The Speaker of the House of Representatives was represented by Right Honorable Peter Akpatterson. The House of Representatives, in its responsive nature, is cognizant of its role to deliver good governance through lawmaking and oversight. Refer this bill to the committee for further legislative action. As you may know, societies are dynamic and the mode of maintaining law and order also are becoming imperatively dynamic. Ours as a nation cannot be an exception. Given the function of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTI, to investigate all cases of trafficking in persons, including forced labor, child labor, forced prostitution, exploitative labor, and other forms of exploitation. I believe that this forum will grant you the opportunity as stakeholders to make relevant and meaningful contributions to the sessions of the bill that will assist in enriching the proposed amendment for the robust acts. The session began in earnest 
with contributions for the proposed amendment of the TPA Act 2015 by various stakeholders, including NACTOL, the Network Against Child Trafficking, Abuse and Labour, National Human Rights Commission, Nigeria Security and Civil Defence Corps, International Federation of Women Lawyers, Federal Ministry of Labour and Employment, and National Commission for Persons with Disabilities. The Director General of NAPTIP, Professor Fatima Waziri Azi, also made a speech in response to some of the contributions. Other stakeholders present include the Nigeria Immigration Service, Nigerian Bar Association, representatives from ministries, departments and agencies, and the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime. The public hearing ended with a vote of thanks by the Deputy Chairman of the House Committee on Human Rights, Honorable Eliza Simon. The amendment of the Trafficking in Persons Prohibition Enforcement and Administration Act 2015 will ensure stiffer penalties for offenders. The Director General of NABTEP, Professor Fatima Waziri Azi, attended a two-day capacity building workshop on sexual and gender-based violence organized by the Federal Ministry of Justice for Judges in Abuja. Don't go away. The Federal Ministry of Justice recently organized a two-day capacity building for judges on sexual and gender-based violence with focus on the use of practice direction and guidelines on trial of sexual and gender-based violence cases and ancillary procedure. Some of the dignitaries in attendance include the Director General of NAPTIP, United Nations Resident Coordinator, Representative of the European Union Ambassador, Honorable Minister of Women Affairs, Honorable Minister for Budget and National Planning, Attorney General and Minister of Justice and Honorable Judges. The Director of Public Prosecution, Al Haji Muhammad Abubakar, welcomed the guests on behalf of the Ministry. It is with great pleasure that I welcome our distinguished guests and judges from across the various states of the Federation to this very important occasion. Sexual and gender-based violence, which is synonymous with violence against women, is a problem faced by many nations of the world. However, as a government, we cannot rest on our oars in our fight against this menace. The objective of conducting this training is specifically to enhance the capacity of the judges on the knowledge use of the practice direction for prosecution of SGBV cases and implementation of protection orders under the VAP Act and apply them appropriately in the determination of SGBV cases. To enhance their knowledge of emerging GBV trends in so such as conflict-related sexual violence and school-related gender-based violence, which has further aggravated the situation and drastically contributed to the increasing data of SGBV cases in the country. The Director General of NAPTIP, Professor Fatima Waziri Azi, highlighted some of the efforts of the agency toward curbing SGBV in the FCT. Um, let me start by applauding the Federal Ministry of Justice for putting this um, session together. We can all agree that the incremental cases of sexual and gender-based violence across the country is extremely disturbing. And the ability to control this crime is something that we must all do. But we can't do that without um, the support of my lords. We all know that NAPTIP is responsible for implementing the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act in the FCT. So for us in NAPTIP, for the year 2022, I don't think we had any year as busy as 2022. So for last year, we had a total of 1,342 reported cases. So we had 907 walk-ins and 435 through our call center. The crimes top on the list for the FCT was spousal abuse. Next in line was followed by rape, then we had inflicting of um, physical injury, and then abandonment. We had 91 emergency cases. So cases that qualify under emergency cases are rape cases, um, cases of incest, and cases where victims needed to be rescued 
immediately. Then we currently have 89 um, cases in court and we were only able to secure four convictions for 2022. And um, at least for now, we've seen that judges are beginning to to award compensation to victims. I know last year we saw that in about two of our, our cases for SGBV, but for our trafficking cases, we have more judgments that come with um, compensation for, for victims. And this is an area that I, I am pleading to my Lord to please um, consider. So let me say thank you, my Lord, for all you do. The UN Resident Coordinator, Matthias Kimali, and the representative of the European Union Ambassador, Alexander Borges Gomez, delivered goodwill messages. Nigeria's desire to promote and protect the fundamental human rights of each citizen is very clear and not questioned at all by us in the UN. This is evident not only in the constitutional guaranteed rights, but also in additional laws and policies that are enacted and the panels that you have set up to strengthen and promote human rights and justice in the country. Now, in, from a UN perspective, we think that access to justice can be looked at from two senses. The obvious one being simple access of each citizen's to, citizen to courts where they can have their cases heard and tried. A second deeper sense of justice promotes the ability to then get redress for the violation of their legal rights. So this workshop for us in closing is an opportunity to also identify areas that can make the legal system to be more responsive to the dispensation of justice for survivors of sexual and gender-based violence in Nigeria. And by the nature of, of uh, sexual and gender-based violence, it's, it's very sensitive um, uh, and it's very difficult to, to prosecute. Not only sometimes even when the cases are put in office, as you know, people are not willing to come in for, for, for feelings of shame, come forward and, and pursue the cases. Um, we have, the European Union, uh, we have supported what we call sexual assault referral centers, SARS, across the country. Uh, we have put on uh, about 1 billion money into this, and the number has grown to 33. 32 across 19 states and the FCT. Honorable Minister of Women Affairs, Dame Pauline Tallinn, made a speech on the Ministry's efforts on SGBV. The Federal Ministry of Women Affairs has demanded to stimulate active participation of women and children in all facets of national life, including their empowerment, protection, advancement of their social lives, and the overall well-being of women and children. This capacity building initiative is very strategic and instructive as we continue our advocacy to stem the tide of sexual and gender-based violence, which has continued to plague our society despite the efforts being made by government and other stakeholders. The role of judges in tackling this menace is key and very, very important. As at August 2019, when I assumed office, only 23 states had domesticated the Child's Rights Act when compared to what we have today, 34 states. As of the time I assumed office, only 8 states had domesticated the VAP Act. Today, I'm proud to say we have 35 that have domesticated the VAP Act. And these two laws take advantage of the provisions therein as we strive to address sexual and gender-based violence. 17 states have since established the family court in line with the provisions of the Child's Rights Act. We are still pushing for more states to join. The last on the count was River State. Let me conclude by saying that the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs is committed to working with all of you in enhancing gender justice in Nigeria. The Attorney General and Honorable Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, delivered the keynote address. The workshop 
The second is the swimming scheme organized by the Foreign Ministry of Justice to key sector players involved in the investigation, prosecution, and trial of offenses on the very complex and vexed issue of sexual and gender-based violence. The federal government of Nigeria, out of concern and desire for rapid response to address these challenges and restaurants, initiated far-reaching policy, institutional and legislative measures to curb the growing menace of SGB offenses in our communities. This capacity building program is therefore organized in recognition of the central role that the judiciary plays as driver of machinery of criminal justice administration in Nigeria, as well as the need for, dynamic, for dynamism on their part in expeditiously performing their role as envisaged on that administration of criminal justice act 2050. The technical sessions began after the opening ceremony. The capacity building for honorable judges of the High Court of Justice is geared towards ensuring speedy dispensation of justice on issues of sexual and gender-based violence in Nigeria. Partnership is one of the five-pronged approach employed by NABTIP in its fight against human trafficking. Recently, some of the partners paid courtesy calls to the agency. Stay with us. The Deputy Commissioner of Police, Force CID and Gender Coordinator, Rita Oyintareoki and her team, recently paid a courtesy visit to the Director General of NAPTIP, Professor Fatima Waziri Azi. Speaking on the purpose of her visit, DCP Oki said that she is working to improve the gender desks across the 36 states of the Federation. Welcoming the DCP and her team, the DG NAPTIP said that the agency is currently working on the Violence Against Persons Report 2021 and reassured that NAPTIP will continue to work closely with the Nigeria Police Gender Unit to curb the incidences of sexual and gender-based violence in the FCT. In a related development, the Director General of NAPTIP, Professor Fatima Waziri Azi, recently received the new team leader of FIAP, Federico Milan and his team. Mr. Milan expressed satisfaction with their project, the Action Against Trafficking in Persons and Smuggling of Migrants, a TIPSAM project, which is being implemented by FIAP. He thanked the DG, NAPTIP, for the opportunity to partner with the agency and listed some of the areas of focus. Receiving the team, Professor Waziri Azi highlighted the mandate of the agency and its operations and added, that the Trafficking in Persons Prohibition Enforcement and Administration Act 2015 is being amended to incorporate current trends. Our next report is on the Capacity Building Workshop organized by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime for officers of NAPTIP and other ministries. Keep watching. The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, UNODC, recently organized a three-day capacity building on e-intelligence and cyber forensic for investigators from NAPTIP and the Federal Ministry of Justice at the UN House in Abuja. The team leader, Human Trafficking and Migrant Smuggling, UNODC, Abimbola Adeumi, spoke on the essence of the training. During cyber program in coordination with trafficking and persons is very important because uh, the new world or the new angle towards investigation now is that as we're doing financial investigation that we're also doing investigation of CIP cases in parallel because we know that if we're able to trace and follow the money and uh, we have investigators that are sharp and skilled in those uh, financial investigations uh, we can follow the money and use it to get uh, the traffickers in the same vein and that's why for us in UNODC we are putting a lot of intervention into upgrading the skills of NAPTIP investigators uh, to be able to have these specialized skills for financial investigation because we know that the fall, the money is actually the oxygen which the traffickers use to continue to perpetrate this crime. So if you are able to 
snuff out the money and make it inaccessible for them, then you have reduced uh, the likelihood of them uh, committing the crime again. We build also the capacity of the prosecutors because they will meet some of these evidences in court and they need to understand the, uh, the background of where they are coming from. And the case teams is always investigators and prosecutors together. And so bringing them together was for us a good way of uh, learning for both. Some of the areas of focus include Cyber Foundation, Managing Digital Evidence, Technical Attribution, Case Study and Practical Investigation. For the participants, the training is a welcome development. Uh, we are with the setting up of the Cyber Crime Tax Team by the Director General of NAPTI to actually enhance, uh, enhance the capability of NAPTI to investigate cases of uh, sexual online uh, and also cases of extortion and also the menace of cyber crime and especially recruitment for uh, human trafficking using the online tools. So uh, UNADC have supported us. This is a this is a second of the series of the trainings that UNADC have supported NAPTI. Uh, we brought in investigators from several places, uh, nine zonal commands and the headquarters. We are grateful for the um, to the UNODC for this um, extension of fellowship. This is the second arm of the training we've experienced, and it's going to help us um, in how to tender digital evidence in court. We are prosecutors, but um, in the cybercrime unit, we've started in-depth investigation, and this training will go to support our work. The UNODC has been partnering with NAPTIP since the inception of the agency. As usual, NAPTIP has begun the year with a harvest of convictions. Stay with NAPTIP on the move. The Federal High Court sitting in Portacot, River State, presided over by Honorable Justice Phoebe Ayua, has sentenced Ngozi Joy Amadi to two years imprisonment for recruitment of a victim from Portacot to Libya for sexual exploitation. The court also awarded compensation to the victim in the sum of 500,000 naira to be paid by the convict. Also, a state high court sitting in Sokoto, Sokoto State, presided over by Honorable Justice Isa Mohammed Bargaja, has sentenced a 29-year-old man, Sanusi Kasim, to one-year imprisonment for procurement of a 14-year-old female for sexual exploitation. The judge also awarded compensation of 150,000 naira to the victim. NAPJIP has intensified its prosecution efforts to serve as a deterrent. Every day, NAPTIP receives reports on all forms of violence against persons, diverse cases of domestic violence, rape, incest, physical abuse, especially child abuse. NAPTIP is leaving no stone unturned to ensure that victims are compensated and offenders severely punished. But NAPTIP needs a lot of support. The VAP Act can be most effective when each state government takes the required steps to domesticate the Act. Then victims shun the culture of silence and report to NAPTIP. Call NAPTIP today on 0703-0000203 or the toll-free short code 627. NAPTIP, ensuring a human trafficking and violence-free nation. Before we say goodbye, let's bring you an account of a victim. My mom was going to work from 1 o'clock to 12 o'clock in the night. Our neighbor now can call us in the night, in 10 o'clock in the night, that we should go our room. The man now say, Ma, carry my sister, my small sister, to go drop her. Let me lock her inside the room. I now carry the small sister, go lock her. The man say, Oh, I'm going to play game with her for not play game. She now come and rape me. My auntie was come to carry rapper. She want to go to church in the night. The auntie now come, she now meet me, her door is locked. She now come as one woman like this. Her name is Adria. The woman, has, the woman they sleep. We now come out, all of us, with the man. She now say, what thing she do for, for me? The man now say na lie or she not do anything, we just the play game. My auntie now bring him for for 
head office. Thank you, Naptic. What you have done for me. We thank you. For more inquiries and support or to report cases of suspected human trafficking, violence against persons and child abuse, please call NAPTIP hotline 0703-0000203 or the short code 627 or email us info at naptip.gov.ng. Visit our website www.naptip.gov.ng. Follow us on our social media platforms at NAPTIP Nigeria or watch our videos on YouTube. Our time is up. Thank you for watching and do join us again next week. My name is Angela Agwegi. Goodbye. <laughs>